What's up, Ryan Pam? So I'm going to make a statement that I think goes against what a lot of people hear, especially in the modern fitness industry, and that is abs are not made in the kitchen. So you hear a lot of people make a, a slightly valid point that if you're too fat in your midsection, you're not going to see your six pack. But this idea that you're only worried about exposing your abdominals through the utilization of dieting practices and lower body fat percentages is a huge reductionist theory. Uh, and it's just not true. Simply put, when I started to see my abs get the most pronounced in my physique, it was when I started training my abs really hard. So I'm gonna show you guys my four different ab exercises slash variations, because a few of them you can vary the way you do these exercises, uh, that really brought out my abs the most. And this is actually something a lot of people notice on YouTube. Everyone's like, holy crap, your abs got really cut during that, that cutting phase I did from you know 226 down to 210. But what they didn't know is that for that last year before I started cutting, and then during that entire year of that cutting phase, I was training my abs like crazy and I had actually been this lean before. Actually, I've been leaner in the past, but I had nowhere near the same abdominal uh, visual effect that was exposed after the cut because now my abs are actually built. So what you have to understand about the abs is they're a really thin muscle sheet. They do not pop out like your biceps or triceps or quad muscles, which have big sweeping muscle bellies. So if you train your abs, it is not gonna make them look bulky. This is a huge myth. The only reason you see really high level pro bodybuilders with like bulky looking abs is because they're using usually exogenous hormones. Um, they're on steroids that are causing their gut um, well, there's a lot of factors that go into this, but the main one is their visceral fat content within their gut starts to protrude out and they start holding a lot more subcutaneous and deep visceral fat, which causes that kind of bloated look to the abs. So it is not from training your abs that causes this. In fact, the opposite in my experience is true. The more I train my abs, the more I can hold my midsection in nice and tight. So I'm gonna show you guys four exercises in today's video, but I'm only gonna do a tutorial for one of them because this here, what I'm about to show you, as many of you know, is my number one favorite exercise for the abs, and that is the GHR sit-up. And I'm also gonna tell you guys my favorite three other exercises that I perform. Uh, and so we're gonna get into the number, the four exercises, and they're really four areas of your abdominals that you need to train to get maximum uh, carryover and exposure of those abs when you are lean enough. So again, it is worth noting, yes, you do need to be at low enough body fat percentage to see your abdominals, but that's not the only thing that goes into making a nice six pack ab look on a person. So first thing what you wanna do before we even talk about the GHR setup, which is in my opinion, the king of all ab exercises. The reason it's the king of all ab exercises is it targets all your main functions that these six pack abs and some of the other smaller intricate muscles deep inside the core perform. So we're gonna get into that, but the number one thing here about this GHR sit-up is how to set it up. So what I do is I make sure my butt, the bottom of where my butt and hamstring meet, actually hang off the edge of this pad. If I'm too far up this way, this is not gonna be a full ab exercise. I'm only gonna get upper ab activation. You need to make sure your butt, the bottom of your glute cheeks, are hanging off here. So you gotta see a little bit of cheek down here. Second thing is I really prefer very safe GHRs. I have heard, and actually at a gym I was at, I've had many incidences with really shitty GHRs when someone's performing this exercise and it's uh, broken and fallen on them. In fact, one girl I knew like cut open her ear really bad from falling on this thing. So make sure you have a good GHR if you're gonna try this because this is a little bit of a sketchy exercise if you're using inadequate equipment. So the butt needs to be hanging off. Now, what you have to understand is what we're gonna do is go down to full extension here at the hips. So we're not gonna hang way down here. There is a variation that I do that with, but we're just gonna go to full extension. So what you're gonna find is the number one, or sorry, not the number one, but the first a primary function you're gonna train at the abs is actually anti-extension. It's a stability effect. This will have great carryover to your squats and deadlifts, and it's gonna train your deep core muscle, the transverse abdominis, which is the main function of that muscle is to pull and draw your core in and hold it tight. So if you tighten your abs up as if someone's gonna punch you in the stomach, that's your TVA mostly working along with the abdominal uh, wall and a few other areas. But when I get here, we're getting anti-extension because I'm not letting my back just go loose. Okay, so we get anti-extension. The next part is I'm gonna crunch up in an actual flexing motion. So I'm not keeping my back straight. 
That would be good for the hip flexors and the psoas, but instead I wanna get the abs involved. So I'm actually gonna let my back round over as I come up here, touch my knees or above my knees with my elbows, and that's gonna allow the abdominal wall to get fully contracted. And then on top of that, while I'm doing that, I'm pulling my legs up into this pad, which will fire the hip flexors, the psoas, that rectus femoris, the whole hip flexor complex that is really important for power lifters to train because power lifters notoriously only do hip extension and we don't do a lot of hip flexion. So this is really important to train. Now, while this isn't the greatest range of motion on the hip flexors, it's pretty awesome that you're training anti-extension, flexion of the abdominal wall, as well as hip flexion. So you're getting all of these functions combined into one. So again, we're gonna come down here and then crunch on the way up touch the elbows somewhere on the thighs, get a nice full contraction. I will actually insert some videos of that exercise of me performing that exercise. Now, what are the other abdominal exercises that I recommend? So first one, GHR sit-ups. Do those both light, body weight for high reps, as well as heavy. I've gone up to, I think, 80 or 90 pounds for about a set of eight on there. So I've gone really, really heavy on these, and I hold that dumbbell nice and high, so it's a lot of resistance. Do your GHRs nice and heavy and high reps. The other exercise I really love, which is gonna preferentiate tension more to the upper abdominal wall, as well as the serratus interior, and it's gonna work function of your overhead mobility and a few other cool things with your hip flexors, is actually gonna be the barbell sit-up. This is a really rare exercise. I'm gonna plug in some footage over the screen so you can see it. But you guys can see when I'm leaner and I'm doing these, look at the contractions I'm getting in my abs. It's absolutely insane. Again, this is gonna preferentiate that serratus interior, upper abdominal complex, and getting the scapula to push in front of you. So a huge way you can get your abdominal inside the game of this is by getting your scapula into protraction. So we can do that with the GHR sit-up, but a way to actually weight that function to resist that function with actual tension is gonna be through the barbell sit-up. So this is actually gonna reign a little bit more supreme when it comes to that upper abdominal serratus interior complex of the abdominal wall, as well as a couple other cool functions. The next exercise I really like are side planks, but it's not just for the obliques. So some of you may say, oh yeah, yeah that's a good exercise for the obliques. There's two things to note here. One, you're gonna get a lot of hip work in this too. Your glute medius and minimus are gonna help stack your hips into a nice straight line. And on top of that, it's gonna really loosen up your QL. So I like an active range of motion here. This is really healthy for power lifters and you're getting some nice abdominal work here, which is actually really hard to come by. And I find this is one of the few exercises where I can actually really feel, uh, excuse me, I said abdominal, excuse me, uh, oblique tension here. This is one of the few exercises where I can feel my obliques actually performing and loading with tension. So side planks are always in my program. And then lastly, I like hanging leg raise variations or leg raise variations with resistance. So it doesn't matter if you want to do hanging leg raises or if those get too easy for you. What I do is I actually lay down on the ground and put a band around my ankles. And I have a video on our group coaching website showing this where I do um, basically lying leg raises with band resistance. You can also do this with a cable and you can also do a knee raise variation if you don't want to do the full leg raise. So depending on if you want to hit more hip flexor or if you want to hit more lower abdominals here, you're going to see this is going to preferentiate a ton of tension towards the lower half. So the GHR sit-up targets everything. Side planks get the obliques. The barbell sit-up gets the upper abs and serratus. And then the leg raise variations are gonna get your lower abs and hip flexors. So you can see you have your all around exercise and then you have an exercise that kind of targets all the main areas of the obliques, abs, and all the exposed muscles that you guys are gonna to wanna to show off when summertime comes around. So that's today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, email me, brendan at prime-strength.com if you guys have any questions. I'll catch y'all in the next one.